Okay, so we're at day 10 and it's about colour palette today and colour palette choices in particular. This isn't colour theory, this is all about, let me just pop you down there, hang tight. So this is about picking a colour, a main colour for your painting and thinking about colour design and the colour choices. When I first started painting, I would just literally pick up a colour I fancied painting with and then another colour and by the end of the day, I'd end up with a painting with all of the colours on, which would be fabulously bright and colourful and friendly and cheerful and have lots of energy. But there was very little thought or design and colour has such an emotional impact on us. Colour can arouse strong emotions. Well, I'm not talking about sexy stuff, but like... <laughs> no, but it really can. It's got a powerful and direct impact on the brain. It can create a response with anything from aggression all the way through to tranquility. So there's every reason if you're using colour as part of your artwork to really have a responsibility to understand what it communicates. Now from an early age we're taught that there's three main primaries, red, blue and yellow, and that we can quickly mix any one of those three to make other colours. So they're called the primary colours and then mixing those colours you then get secondary colours. But you soon, as, as you get involved with your art and with colour and becoming more proactive about colour choice and colour communication, you realise that that way of thinking, just thinking about the three primary colours, is really limiting. Colour theory needs and deserves a lot of time to be researched, understood and practised and in your own way. Today what we're going to do is take an element of colour and I'm going to show you a way to plan your colour for your painting. Now you've probably all seen the colour wheel before and some of you may actively use it and that's where you've got the three main primary colours, you've got your secondary colours and you have your tertiary colours. Now I'm going to refer to the colour wheel in this exercise so we can talk about warm colours and cool colours we're not talking about colour mixing at this stage. So even though I'm referring to the colour wheel today, I'm referring to it in a sense of what's cool and what's warm. So it might do you a favour just to print off a reference of a colour wheel, just so you can have that in your bullet journal and remind yourself from time to time when the brain's feeling a bit foggy, what's warm and what's cool. And the more you look at it, the more your brain becomes accustomed to identifying the cool and warm colours quite quickly. I was introduced to this way of planning through Norfolk Painting School and um, I loved it. As soon as I was introduced to it, it made sense to me. But just because I love it doesn't mean that I religiously practice this with every painting. When I use this system, I very often sketch my painting idea first of all. I'll then work out my colour plan and then I'll go back to my little sketch and I'll figure out where I'm going to use those colours in the painting. So I'm going to show you this from a perspective of knowing what a shade is, what a tint is and how to get warm and cool colours from your colour plan. These colour plans can get quite elaborate, quite complicated. This one should be really easy just to grab, get your head around so you can put it into practice straight away. I'm going to jump up onto the easel and do a large colour plan so it's nice and big for you to see and I'll refer to the colour wheel as we go along. So, are you ready? Come on then. So first of all, pick your main colour for your painting. Now this is known as a motif, your motif colour. Now you can pick any colour on here. Today I'm going to pick purple. Any colour opposite the colour you choose is the complementary and we can go further with split complementaries and lots of other colour theory but let's just stay there for a moment. Pick a main colour and recognise its opposite as the complementary colour. So I've picked purple and the opposite is yellow. So I'm going to squidge out some purple, some yellow and at the other end of the palette, I'm going to put some black and white. Look at this. I've cleaned my palette for you. <laughs> 
might be just a little bit easier to see what I'm doing with a cleaner palette. So not too much, not for a colour plan. I've got black and white at the top of my palette and I've got purple, my main colour, and yellow, the complementary of purple. I'm going to draw this in a sharpie on here so you can see it. You might want to draw this plan out on your bullet journal so you're remembering how to set out a colour plan. So first of all, you want a circle here, then diagonally opposite, a circle for your complementary. Draw a line coming down from your first circle and call that shade. From your first circle, draw a line coming across and call that tint. Now, do you remember your main colour is called a motif? So we'll pop that there, motif. And this one opposite is the complementary. So we're gonna call that comp. Now for your comp, you want to draw a line across. And that's gonna be the shade. And a line going up, that's going to be your tint. So what you've got is like a box with two circles, diagonal, diagonal, la, 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 opposite one another. <laughs> diagonally, get me, diagonally across from one another. Grab your palette and your finger, dip your finger into your main colour, your motif, and give me a big splodge of colour on the board like that. Fresh finger into your opposite and onto the board like that. A tint of a colour is a colour with a bit of white in. A shade of a colour is a colour with a bit of black in. And so what we're going to do here is add a little bit of white, a little bit more white, a bit more white, a bit more white, a bit more white to the main colour. And what you'll see is a transition from the strong purple working your way through a scale of tints that are achievable by adding more and more and more white. You might want to get your brush for this point. Grab in the purple, add in a tiny bit of white. And that's going on there like that. Add a bit more white. Add in a bit more white. Bit more white. And again, and again, keep going, and can you see how it's gone from our main colour of purple by adding white, a bit more white each time, we're going through a scale of tints new brush. We're going to do the same but we're adding purple, we're adding black to the purple this time. So grab my purple, add a tiny touch of black, and we work our way down the shade scale. Add in a bit more black each time. It's already quite dark. I could probably have squeezed in another one here or here, I reckon. There we go. So we've now got purple shades going from purple through to black, and we've got purple tints going from purple 
through to a hint of purple. We're going to do the same with the complementary now. So clean brush and it's exactly the same thing. Grab the complementary colour, add a tiny touch of white. And this is the tint, remember? So add in a touch of white, add in a touch more, and a bit more. This is a lovely exercise to do when you know you want to paint, but you don't know where to start or what you're painting. And it might be that you just ask yourself, well, what is going to be the main colour? And then do a colour plan. And getting into this exercise just gets you into the groove of thinking about the painting. There we go. Lovely shade of tints there. So, clean brush. Now we're going to do it with black. So, yellow with a tiny touch of black. A shade colour plan and a tint colour plan for both your complementary and your main motive colour. Now, as I said before, we can make this super complicated or we can make it a nice first step into colour planning. And that's what we're going to do. So we've got our shade, we've got our tint, we've got our main colour and the complementary. What I want to do now is look at temperature, colour temperature. So I'm going to have two lines coming off the motif and two lines coming off the complementary. This side is going to be cool and this side is going to be warm. So what we're going to do now is mix warm colours into the motif and the complementary. So you need a little squidge of your reds, your oranges, your yellows. So the easiest place to start is to ask yourself what's the warmest colour on the colour wheel and it's red, red hot. So taking a little bit of red and adding a touch of purple. You get this lovely warm purple. Going next along the colour wheel you've got orange so mixing a bit of orange with a tiny bit of purple. Then taking a tiny bit of purple with a bit of yellow. So by mixing the warm colours from the colour wheel to our main colour we can get this lovely range of chromatic mixes. We're going to do the same with the complementary. So we're going to head up the warm arrow. So clean brush. Clean brush, she says, wiping it on her trousers. Doo -doo -doo. So yellow. I'm going to start at the warmest point and work our way back. So red plus yellow gives us a beautiful orange. I'm going to pop that just there. So then yellow plus orange gives us a beautiful Jaffa orange. Then yellow plus yellow course we know is the complementary. So that's your stretch on your complementary for warm colours. So we're going to do exactly the same with the cool but we're going to work around the cool side of the colour wheel. So squidge out some blues, some greens and some lemon yellow. Starting with my purple and the coolest colour on the colour wheel is blue, ice cold. So with some blue I'm going to mix some blue and purple together and you get this cool, cool purple. 
you're almost like ultraviolet. Moving up your cool scale, the next one around is green. So mix a bit of green with your purple. And you get this lovely grey. Next colour around is the cool yellow, the lemon yellow. So lemon yellow mixed with purple. And then we have our cool selection for the purple. So same again for the complementary. Take the yellow. We're going to add blue at the end here. So blue, yellow. There's your green. Yellow and green. And then yellow with a touch of lemon yellow. And now you have your cool shades of your complementary colour. Now this colour planning exercise can boggle your brain a little bit. And this is the most simplified version, as in this is the first step on your understanding of how to colour plan. You can break it down further, but have a go at this first of all. Maybe play in your bullet journal and pick one main colour and then plan from that main colour. Then... Just to do a compare and contrast, pick a totally different main colour and do the exercise again. And if you can get this understanding under your belt, you've got a useful tool going forward for your next painting. You can now colour plan your main colour. It's complementary, so it really pops. How to mix the tints, how to mix the shades. You've got an understanding of how to create the cool colours and the warm colours coming from that. This exercise is really useful for just visualising how far you can stretch a colour and for you to make conscious decisions about what is the main colour of your painting and how can you make that painting pop with a beautiful complementary. If you mix purple and yellow together, you get this kind of grey brown. It's a desaturated colour. So, for example, if you wanted to make your yellow less bright, Rather than adding black, which would make a shade, desaturate the colour by adding a tiny bit of purple. The same with the purple. If you wanted the purple to be less bright, add yellow to it and eventually you get to this desaturated colour. And that's the rule for all colour opposites. They desaturate one another. They kind of cancel each other out. So have a go at colour mixing. So have a go at colour planning in your bullet journal or get a big board out and really go to town in stretching both your motif and your complementary colours. Now, there is also various apps that you can download that can help you understand colour a little bit more. Uh, my favourite one is called Colour Wheel. You can pick a colour and it will tell you the complementary and also the tertiary colour. So there's lots of gadgets that you can use to help you understand it, but there's nothing better than getting paint on your hands and actually physically doing it. You'll understand from a tactile point of view how much paint you're mixing together to what you're creating, what the results are you're getting. And I would actually go further. Once you've got this plan down, I'd then write a load of notes about what you did to create them or what part of the plan that you're going to focus on or remind yourself that if you mix colour opposites then you desaturate a colour or remind yourself that it's black slowly added to a colour that creates a shade or it's white that's slowly added to a colour that creates a tint. These things will help just embed that learning for you and I'm not kidding, you'll find it so useful when you come to look at a painting and you start to ask yourself, what does this painting need? And then tomorrow we're going to be playing around with top down camera art. I've only done this a couple of times, so I'm going to be learning with you on this one. Anyway, see you tomorrow.